Hey everyone, I'm here with David Barnes. He is from Peace of Mind Overtures. You can find more about him at peaceofmindovertures.com. We just recorded a couple episodes of the podcast. And I just had so much fun with this podcast and with David just just in general because his process is so cool. He has um, an intention session that you do just to catch you up really quickly. And then you watch a movie. And from that movie, you take energy and feedback and insights. And it's just an amazing process. It's kind of coaching using movies which isn't, is, is fun and you get a lot out of it. So it's just a super cool technique and uh, super powerful. David, what's up, man? Hey, man, it's really fun being with you, Mario. I love everything that you're doing, your spirit, your vibe, everything. And you're an open-hearted guy and who doesn't want to hang out with people like that, huh? Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. And even though, you know, as we've been recording, my puppy, Waldo, who's always in the room with me, has been making some noise. He wants to be part of the conversation. So if you hear him bark throughout this, apologies but we decided to just go with it and whatever happens happens i I just wanted to preface that real quick but so we on the podcast we were talking about and so listen to the podcast episodes if you haven't one the movie that david chose for me to go through with using his process was um won't you be my neighbor the documentary about mr rogers which couldn't have been more fitting and we talked (laughs) about that on the podcast yeah but um I, i we were talking about it before we hopped on here and i think there were a couple more points we wanted to talk about uh, about that particular movie because it is such a powerful movie, even though it's a documentary, but it's so much more than that. It really is Mario. And, and it's come at a time when all of us are searching and looking for some kind of meaning uh, and, and some kind of understanding of the times that we're going through and the challenges that we're all experiencing. And this film comes out to remind us of the sweetness of this man, Mr. Rogers, but it reminds us of of a time when maybe we weren't fighting as much as we've been, and there wasn't as much division, and that gentleness and tenderness was respected, and that people of of all backgrounds related to Mr. Rogers, from senators, you remember the scene with Senator Pastore, to to musicians, Yo-Yo Ma, and to other uh, actors, and he touched so many different ways that people look back and they don't see him as, as, a, as a character that divided us, but somebody that brought us all together and we can all look at Mr. Rogers and find aspects that we wish we had in ourselves. So the scene with the Senator, let's talk about that for a minute because that's another one that's super interesting. And it's one that you can look up and watch on YouTube if you really want to without seeing the entire movie, but it's better in the contextual form of the movie. But what really catches me about that is you'd see Mr. Rogers as this really kind, loving, gentle person. And even in that situation, which is anything like that environment, I should say, which is anything but kind, gentle, he still brought that there. And, you know, I would venture to say the Senator is used to dealing with people who are in your face, argumentative, right this is my point, like trying to will their or force their will upon you. And when Mr. Rogers showed up and kind of took the Mr. Rogers approach, which Mr. Rogers achieved force through gentleness in that particular context. And he did his thing and got his outcome from this man, but you saw the Senator's whole vibe change. Well, I I love that you brought this up because there's so much research now going out about the power of our heart energy. And we see that in the scene. We we see it transform right before our eyes. The the, uh, team at HeartMath have been studying the power of the heart for years and doing all kinds of amazing stuff. And they've shown us that the heart puts out 5,000 times more electromagnetic energy than the mind. And if the heart has glial cells and neurons that are sending more information up here than that is coming down here. And so when I'm working with business people, I tell them, look, this is the CEO and this is your president. St- strategy, creativity, implementation. And the power of this heart energy literally changes rooms and we get to see it when Mr. Rogers gets there. And so you use the word a force. And, and actually we have several, we have a podcast about aligning with more power than force because power comes from the heart and transform things. And when you come from the heart and create things, win-win outcomes happen in ways that your mind cannot create. But most of us, especially in business, are told to, to use force 
to get outcomes. And those always create wins and losses. But power is this amazing force. And so there's this section where he gets really quiet and he's telling Senator Pastore about what he likes to say to children. And he says, there's no person in the whole world like you. And I like you just the way you are. And immediately, Senator Pastore's face just goes from to this sweetness. And he says, well, sir, you just got your $40 million. This is the power of love that we've been hearing the Beatles sing about, saying all you need is love. We've been hearing so many uh, people talk about this, but we don't intellectually realize that it transforms everything and makes everything better. And so, you know, I think about this song, All We Need Is Love, a lot. And, um, and I think I, I get it at a deeper level now because love has a rippling effect that shines the light on the next best step for any situation or the next best door to open because it has such a tangible, tangible effect on situations and problems and people. And we get to see that in this movie and in, in this alignment movie process session, of course I have hundreds of uh, amped sessions, amplified session, you know, statements in there that will help people align with that. I think the thing about love that, that, kind of catches me as you're talking and I'm thinking about is the fact that, you know, in order to bring more love to the world, you don't have to go give people things or they don't have to acquire things or do, you know, everyone has an unlimited potential for love, right? You just have to open it up within yourself because doing that not only shares that with other people, but it also gives them the permission to open it up within themselves. So it's not like a, a fixed amount. It's not like money, right? And even money is an energy. It's not really a fixed amount, but we tend to see it that way. Love is just, I have it. I need to work and open it up and share it and give it. And the more I give, typically, the more you feel. And it's contagious, Mario. Love continues to, to ripple long before we're gone. Hence, the, to, uh, I just mentioned the Beatles. But look at the characters in this, uh, this movie, Won't You Be My Neighbor? One of them is Yo-Yo Ma, talking about the first time he met Mr. Rogers. Now, when I saw that segment, you remember he said Mr. Rogers gets really close and it made him very uncomfortable. Well, I've met Yo-Yo uh, three or four times for my work at the Dallas Symphony. And the first time I met him, he did the same thing. And then I, he, my children were really young. They were three and five at the time. And the first time he met them, he got down like Mr. Rogers says in the movie, and he got really close to them and he learned about them. And do you know he remembered their names and he did that every time he met him, which was a couple more times. Why I'm saying that is I'm watching the movie and Yo-Yo saying where he learned that from was Mr. Rogers. And I got to be on the receiving end of that. And so did my children. And it's just this example that we don't know how we affect other people's lives. Like when we come from the heart and when we come from love. And I, I just was so touched by that in the session and having personally been on the receiving end of Mr. Rogers' wisdom via the amazing Yo-Yo Ma. And it's, it's amazing that the one other thing I want to mention is something you talked about in the podcast when we were recording it. You said that when you had, you know, you had this high powered, high stress job at the Ford Motor Company. And before you would go to work, you would watch Mr. Rogers <laughs> yeah. the TV yeah. show just to kind of get your vibe. And <laughs> relax my wife nuts. <laughs> <laughs> my wife got sick of it. You know, I'd jump up early so I could listen to it. She tried to sleep through it. And I just, I just loved the way he talked, Jen. I loved how it reminded me of being a child. And that is something I got from this movie session that I want to share with everybody. Mr. Rogers stays childlike most of his life. In fact, do you remember the one movie where the guy's going, he's interviewing him and he goes, are you straight? Are you really straight? And they make this assumption about his, his sexual preference. But no, he was childlike. And I've only recently learned that this need to be childlike and have an open heart is something all of us need because Ch children are, are open to all kinds of possibilities in ways as adults were not. And we get rigid in these adult bodies and we get concrete where we, we won't look at other situations with new eyes. And Mr. Rogers kept a childlike heart that made him more malleable and more flexible 
to continue to change and grow with his own awareness. And it's inspired me to want to do the same. And uh, that's really one of the really great lessons I got from this AMP session, Won't You Be My Neighbor. Yeah, and I think one of the things about that childlike and being, being more childlike is the fact that to children, the world is still a new place. And yeah. it's, one, it's full of wonder, and they're just generally curious. Yeah. And so I think that if we can be more curious and, you know, as you said, more open, but I think as adults, we get into these routines and everything's the same all the time, over and over, every day, one day's like the next, especially now with this lock-in thing, with this COVID thing and the lockdown uh, that we've experienced, people are staying home, doing the same thing day after day, but it's kind of opening people up a little bit because they have more time. You're right. And when you have that extra time, you can explore and try new things. But I think it's very important that as as children, if we can keep that wonderment of the world and be open to trying new experiences and seeing new things and being amazed and curious, not just about the world, but about each other, because we're all so unique and so different. And that's kind of like, you know, the conversations I get to have every day. That's what kind of juices me the most about them is I get to meet all these different people and I'm genuinely curious about like, what makes you tick? What excites you? What are you passionate about? What do you love to do? How do you impact the world? And what, what makes you so enthralled by that and passionate about that? And you could tell the difference when you talk to enough people, whether they're just saying the same thing they always say, yeah. or they're talking about something that excites them and that they may not even either have permission to go there or they just generally don't get asked about that. And that's why I like to, you know, you brought up that question that I like to end the podcast that I like to ask everyone, which is what's one thing that, you know, you typically don't get asked, but you'd love to talk, that you'd love to talk about. And when you ask that and someone brings it up, you can see their whole demeanor change. It's such a great question, Mario. And I was so grateful you did that because you challenged me to, and it just popped into my head. Uh, I, I didn't even think for a second you and I would be talking about love on a podcast and about Mr. Rogers and the movie and what he's done. But now, as you see what's happening and the change that's going on in the world, really it's love that's going to get us through it. It's love that's going to create the passion and the, com- and the compassion to be willing to change some of the structures that aren't working anymore to be willing to look at the things than the way we have worked and the way we have done our politics and the way we have either looked out for humanity or we haven't. I, I believe this is like a reset. And I think we're going to start actually seeing more and more people talking about compassion and more people talking about love because we've all had this opportunity to shut down and to be reminded of it and to be slowed down and to, and to connect with our loved ones. But then, You know, the other thing I'm starting to notice is the circle of trust of our families. Have you noticed it's starting to expand on its own? And we're starting to look out for our neighbors and others, and we're starting to expand the possibilities of love and family in ways that really, really excites me. And you're seeing it in the workplace. You're seeing how some companies are just loving their employees through this and keeping them paid and looking out for them and concerned. And some aren't. And I think this kind of awareness is going to change everything, but for the good. That's my belief. Yeah. And the the world definitely is not going to be the same as it was before No, going after. And it's up to us to decide whether it's going to be better or worse, whether yeah. we're going to grow or expand or contract. And so we each need to make that decision individually, but our own decision affects everyone because as you've been saying throughout our conversations, we're all interconnected more so than we even, than we even recognize. You know, Mario, I'm glad you brought that point up because people that have hear, hear me talk, hear me bring this up every single time because I am completely passionate and believe in this. And it's this, the science that's coming out around social contagion right now. And so if you're, you're watching this video and you're curious, I want you to Google social, social contagion TED Talks. And you're going to see some, some scientists who have been looking at the data of the Framingham, Massachusetts heart study. It's a 30-year study. And there are patterns about how we are moving through networks. Uh, we, are, uh, we are getting fat together. We're losing weight together. We are, fear is spreading through networks, anxiety, but love does. And one of the studies that was so fun is they looked at this group that improved their happiness by 15%. And it it, it affected two concentric circles of people they didn't even know uh, with happiness. 
And so this alignment movie process work or these AMP movies help put that ripple into the contagion of our interconnectivity. And for me, that's why I'm so passionate about it. That's why it, I've dedicated my life to it, to think that my joy and my happiness and my discovering of balance and peace of mind could even improve one person's life that I don't know, if, then this is worth the trip. It's absolutely powerful stuff. David, thank Thanks, you so man. much for being here on being the, here. doing the podcast and this. This is so much fun. I want to remind people to visit you. Peaceofmindovertures.com is where they can get more about you. It's been a blast. Let's do it again soon. Oh, Let's pick another movie and do it again soon. Oh, I'd love to do it, Mario. Thanks for having me.